we be, we're dealing with a topic titled, How to Be Ahead in Faith. Okay, look at what it says. Immediately, Jesus made disciples get to the boat uh, and go before him to the other side. Why he sent the multitude away? Let's move very fast. And when he has sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain uh, by himself to pray. Now, when evening had come, or when evening came, he was alone there. But the, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by waves, for the wind was contrary. Okay, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Next line. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the world. And he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Glory be to God. And immediately Jesus stretched forth out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. We said at the beginning that this, um, this is a, a picture of the Christian journey to eternity, to the other side. I can't go over that. Go and listen to step one. And then we also say that, which I repeated a bit of it last week, you don't need a lot of faith to be ahead in faith. Because Peter was the only one that walked on water, right? He was the only one that walked on water. He was ahead of everybody on that. I mean, has anybody walked on water here now? <laughs> Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's like somebody that said he wanted to raise the dead. Because he read from the book of, uh, he read from uh, Smith Wiggles' book, Smith Wiggles' book, book, that the man raised, is it 11 or 13 deaths? 13 deaths. So the man tried. Nothing has worked. And he now said something to this effect that way he's targeting Wiggles' record. But the man is still 13 ahead of him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you, some of you didn't get the joke. Anyway, let's leave, let, let's, leave that, let's leave that alone. I know some of you, when something is English, it's very difficult for you to comprehend. But let's, let's leave that alone. Next time I try and crack joke in your native language, maybe that will help. Okay. So, the, uh, what's the name of this man? Peter is still ahead of everybody on that. Glory be to God forevermore. And we said there are certain factors that contributed to him being ahead in faith. We said number one factor was the fact that, number one, he saw what others didn't see. And in order for you to be ahead of others, you must see what they don't see. And I'm praying for you, and I'm praying for myself in the name of Jesus. May God open our eyes to see what others, it's not, or what others are not seeing. He was the only one that saw the possibility. He was the only one that saw that possibility that it's possible to walk on the water. Others saw a ghost. He said, okay, if it's you, ask me to call. He was the one that saw that possibility. I want you to believe that everything that God has allowed you to see in life, they are possible. Yeah. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. If it's you, if you are the one, please bid me to come. And he saw that possibility and it happened for him. Others saw it. They saw it with their physical eyes. But they didn't see with their inner eyes. They saw the ghost walking. But they didn't see the possibility. Hallelujah. That, that explains we are, why two people will come to Abuja. The same father, the same mother. They went to the same school. Grew, grew up in the same environment. In five years, one will become a millionaire. The other one will still be begging. Because it depends on what you see. For he said, as far as you can see, I will give it to you. God is committed to what you see. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. And then we said that in order for you to be ahead in faith, you must hear what others don't hear. 
They all, it, it, it was, they all heard him when he said, it is I, don't be afraid. They all heard him when he said, he didn't say, Peter, come. He said what? Come. It was an open invitation. But only Peter heard it. Only Peter responded. Glory be to God forevermore. Peter only said, if you ask me to come, right? He said, come. He didn't say, Peter, come. And he was the only one that heard it. He took the challenge and he was the only one that walked on the water. You must hear what other, others are not willing to hear. Glory be to God forevermore. And we said number three, where was last week? What do we say? You must ask what others are not willing to ask. Only him ask. I want to work on the water. Others didn't, other, other didn't ask. Ask, it will be given unto you. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be opened unto you. For everyone that asks what receives. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Today, let me quickly go to what I have today. Number four, today, you must be willing to ignore what others embrace. You must be willing to do what? Ignore what others embrace. Pastor T, where did you get that one from? They all saw ghosts. They were all afraid. Who ignored the fear? Only Peter. Others wanted security of the boat. He was willing to take the adventure. If was, you are willing to ignore security and go for adventure, God will reward you. In fact, do I dare to say eh, that life itself will reward you? Honestly, just be willing to ignore what others embrace. Others, you know, you know, in Nigeria, we embrace negativity a lot. You sit with others, you hear them talking. It's all about hmm, eh, the cost of naira. Hmm, I said they see the cost of dollar. Sorry. Hey, oh, ah. Sometimes I find myself tilting in that direction. Sometimes I find myself sliding into that direction. I quickly arrest myself and draw myself back. You must be willing to ignore what others embrace. They were all, let's say this is the boat. They were all in the boat. Others were willing to stay back. He said, if you are the one, ask me to come. Let the level embrace the security of the boat. I'm really I'm willing to take, this, the, take, take this, the, 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 the risk of the turbulence. Don't forget, Bible said the wave, the wave didn't just start. The wave, Bible said the wave has been going on. The, the boat has been tossed to, to and fro before now. So there was no safety anywhere. Are you hearing me? What you call safety is your perception. Wow. Even the boat itself was being tossed to and fro. So he was willing to ignore what others embrace. Are you hearing me? Yes, Ooh, how, do I, how do I put this to you? you know? I want to beg you. Eh? Be different because of your faith. Be different because the word of God is in you. Be different. Just don't, don't talk like them. Don't speak like them. Ignore everything they've embraced. And God will meet you at that point. Yes, sir. Sometimes, let me tell you something. When you want to walk by faith, you, you look a bit arrogant. Yeah. Because yeah. they will say everything they want to say. You just look at this as if they didn't say anything. And you move on. They are like, ah. Are you deaf? Are you blind? Can't you hear everything we are saying? No. I heard, but I chose to what? Or oh, ignore everything that you embrace. Because if I embrace what you embrace, we will get the same result. And I don't like the result that you are getting. I want to get a different result with my life. Oh, this super analysis we are doing. You are embracing what others embrace. Ah, for example, thank God that pandemic was over. We don't know which one will come. But if, if whatever comes, are you hearing me? Let others embrace it. You ignore it. God will meet you at the point of faith. Glory be to God forevermore. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, let me read verse 11. Let me just hurry up this morning. Uh, you know what? At this time, Nigeria, based on the analysis and the micro and the macro economic exigencies. 
it is not proper because before you break even, it will take you because the cough. <laughs> Here we are again. Here we are again. Did you say come? Are you hearing me? Did he say it is I? Did he say, no, don't be afraid? Why don't you ignore the analysis? Because I could imagine that boat, inside that boat. Don't forget, Peter had a brother there, the same father, the same mother, by the name called Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Had a brother there. He said, if you die, don't be me go take care of your wife and children, no? <laughs> so I could, hear, I could hear the conversation inside the boat. Where do you think you are going, Peter? <laughs> For that is the word. If you die, you are your own, no? And I could see people try to hold him back. But if you ignore what they embrace, yes. if you try this one, you will lose all your money, you will lose your life, you will lose. Look, why don't you ignore what they've embraced? Raise your right hand, say in Jesus' name, things are working for me. Heaven is working for me. The earth is responding to me. Nigeria answers to me. Hallelujah. We just, we, it's deliberate action. You could hear when he was about to come out of the boat, you could hear everybody holding their heart for him. Ignore what they embrace. Ignore it. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 8, sorry, verse 11, sorry. Isaiah 8, verse 11. Glory be to God forevermore. For the Lord spoke to me thus, to me, the Lord spoke thus to me. He says what? With a strong hand, and he instructed me that I should not walk, walk in the way of these people. Are you hearing me? God is saying, he's telling you, don't walk in the way of these people. That means these people, they have the way they walk. But you chose a different, don't embrace their way. Because if you embrace their way, you will get the same result that they got. Look at what it says here. So, don't, don't walk in, verse 2, verse, uh, verse 12. Do not say what? A conspiracy. Concerning all that these people call what? A conspiracy. Uh, inflation, inflation. Don't call it inflation. What they call it inflation? It is strange. I'll be what I'm saying this morning. But that's how to get a result. Nor be afraid of their threats. Nor be troubled. Nor be troubled. The Lord of hosts himself shall be your what? Your fear. Your hello. Let him be your fear. And let him be what? Your dream. Give me from verse 11. Give me, give me, we're going to read two versions. Give me New Living Translation. Give me New Living Translation. And I'll read the message. I can only, I can only read this one. This, this 11 it says, The Lord has given me a strong warning. Look at what it says. Not to think like everyone else does. Ignore what they embrace. Don't think the way they, like they think. Glory be to God forevermore. If you live, we say in Nigeria, you can never make it. If you go, don't think like everyone thinks. Well, everywhere is silent this morning. <laughs> My friends have called me. And, uh, ah, Pastor T, how many days have you done now? I said, concerning what? They, they said fasting for the year. <laughs> I just laughed. I laughed. Not one, not two. But a few of them that are, that, are, that are close to. I said, you fasted last year. I said, you fasted the year before. You said, you fasted the year before. You said, you fasted the year before. You said, you fasted the year before. That say yes. So what happened? <laughs> Aren't you able to sit down and question things? And, you, and your own thinking pattern is different. Pastor, what about that passage that said, this kind great not out be said by prayer and fasting. I now ask you, is that the kind you are dealing with? <laughs> yeah, is that the kind you are dealing with? And by the way, was Jesus fasting at that time? 
He said, why could we not cast it out? He told them straight. He said, because of your own belief. He told them straight away. Why can't we be silent on what Jesus is silent about? And be loud on what Jesus is loud about? We'll be doing 100 days. Jesus even did, Jesus did 40 days. And he did it only one time throughout his ministry. And he wasn't doing it every year after year. This one that you are doing year after year. And up to now, even when chicken down your house, I've not raised one. I'm not again fasting. But I'm just ready to place. He said the Lord gave me a warning. To strong Don't think like everyone else does. All this fear-based fasting that you are doing. If we don't do it, the year will not go well. If we don't do it, everything. Unbelievers, who, 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 did they fast? I believe you think fasting will talk, we turn joblessness to job. You will do better if you can sit and think and plan your life. Based on the word of God, you will see what will come out of your life. I don't like people hiding behind religion to explain failure. Yeah. Do you know how people explain failure these days? We are waiting on the Lord. Uh, what, what are you doing right now? We are, the, we are praying about it. Listen to me. You are young people. I'm not trying to be funny this morning. I want to get you out of the hole. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Something that Paul never did. The apostles never did it. But Bible said they continue in the apostles' doctrine. I want you to show me one time that the apostle fasted 40 days. We only saw Peter fasting only once. And Bible said the afternoon was hungry. He told them to go and make food. In chapter, in chapter 10 of Acts, we only saw it. Paul only said we fasted often. But he didn't say we are fasting 40 days. I know some of you think I'm not spiritual. You think I'm a, young, I'm a small boy. I'm a young boy. Are you hearing me? I'm not a young boy again. I've been born again for nearly 40 years. All your Jews, they don't have my record. Is somebody hearing me? I'll be around to know what works and what doesn't work. I've told you, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we all live by grace. At the end of the day, it's not a one that will let another that run it, but God has showed mercy. At the end of it all, it will be according to what is planned. Glory be to God forevermore. Don't think like these people. That's a woman in your village. If you go there, ha, nobody survives that woman. No, don't think like them. Say, when I meet the woman, she will die. She will, be, she will die. When I meet her, she will die. She will, they will, before I leave the village, they will bury her. Because you are not thinking like others. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Others are thinking, thinking insufficiency. You are telling yourself, I will have excess. Yeah. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. I challenge somebody this morning. To ignore what they embrace. Some of you refuse to go to your village because they say somebody is there. The owner, when you get to that village, the owner of the village has come. Because anywhere your soul shall tread, God will give it to you. Think, be different. Glory be to God forevermore. Give me this in the, in, in the message. He said, God, give me a strong warning not to think like them. Look at what he says in the message. God spoke strongly to me. Grab me with both hands. Did you see that? You know you want to get your child to hear something. And you grab them. And you, you vibrate them. Don't shake your gay loo. 
it's a boy you shake. Guests are usually okay. Uh, don't shake your girl. girl. Your girl. Hallelujah. But God spoke to me strongly. Grab me with both hands and warn me not to go along with these people. Don't go along. Tell your neighbor I refuse to go along. Because if you go along, what happened to them will happen to you. Same result. That's what you get. So let them stay back in the boat. You jump out of the boat. Shall we all of them are saying stay back in the boat? They remain in the boat. It's only the one that stepped out that walk on water, right? Don't go along with them. If you go along with them, you get their result. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it is possible. It is possible. Uh, Pastor T, what, what is possible? Whatever you are thinking, it is possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't remember the philosopher that said that for those who think they can and those who think they can't, he said they are both correct. <laughs> if you think you can and you think you can't, both of you, you are very correct. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord spoke to me strongly. Do not go along with these people. Glory be to God forevermore. I profess about your life. You will end well. You will end well. In the name of Jesus Christ. They, they, they are general thinking that they say it takes 15 years to get it done. It will take you 15 months. In the name of Jesus Christ. They look, you think different from them. They say it takes 20 years to get it done. For you, it will take you 20 months. Amen. That is how you think. And God will back you up. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Maybe you came here this morning. Maybe nobody in your family exists. 50, nobody gets to 60. You are here to break the record. Amen. The Lord has warned you with strong hand this morning. He's grabbed you with both hands and warned you and shake you this morning. I say, look, do not go along with these people. Hallelujah. Don't go along with them. In the name of Jesus. Don't go along with them. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand will follow your side, ten thousand on your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Don't go along with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory be to God forevermore. Yes, Please be seated. First, first Samuel 17. Let's read two more scriptures and I will round up for this morning. First Samuel 17. Let's read from verse 11, there about here. Let's, let's start from verse 8 so we can understand. Goliath came and was talking. They were all listening. Economy came talking to you. Naira Valley came talking to you. You were all listening. A couple, a family in this church came to me and said, yeah, they are here this morning. They walk up to me, ah, Pastor, T, I think, was it Saturday they shared that? Are we were Wednesday. So it was on Wednesday. He said, Pastor T, you know our daughter is so place. I said, yes. Ah, he said, Pastor T, God has done it. I said, what about this? He said, somebody gave us scholarship to PhD level. He said, take your hand off. I will take care of this one to PhD level. Any part of the world. Any part of the world. What are you talking about? So if you are there, worry, hey, school fees, everything. Don't talk like these people. Because if you talk like that, you will get their result. You will pay for your children's school fees from the beginning to the end. But if you believe God, Hallelujah. Amen. There are some things, let me tell you this up front. Please, there are some things that by the knowledge of God and by the grace of God inside you, when you make you such offer, you reject it. Because you are going to be like every other person. Do you know something? Why I was cutting? Hmm? I never scut on the outskirts. I said, even as a scutter. 
Charles Cotton. You know why? One guy woke up to me. I remember him like yesterday. We went to say, ah. He said, he mentioned a, a place. He said, you know, you'll be able to get a place. I said, I don't live, I don't live in Africa. He said, but you don't have money. I said, no, worry, God will make a way. We don't spend money, we spend God. Yeah. Some of you, you have allowed money to tie you down. It starts first of all for the way you think. Exactly. Don't think like that. Don't go along there with them. Is somebody here what I'm trying to say this morning? Goliath came, boasting. Are you not servant of Saul? Come and choose, come and fight me. I will kill all of you. Bible said they were listening. They listened to the point that they even know the size of his of his fear. They watched him to the point they saw everything he wore. Bible says he stood and cried out to the, to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not servants of Saul? Are they servants of Saul? Are they not servants of God? Because the first thing that the enemy will do to you is to reduce your status. Are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man from, from yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, and then we will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be. Uh, then we shall be your. You shall be our servant and serve us. Go on. And the Philistines said, "I defy the armies of Israel these days. Give me a man that may fight. To, that may fight together." Look, verse eleven. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were what dismayed and greatly what afraid. But very soon, a young man came to the same battlefield. They were all, you know what they told him? When he got there, they said they brought him. They said, have you seen this man? That's what, they are the one that called his attention. He said, have you seen him? Go to verse 22. No, no, no. And David left his supply. When he, when he was sent to the battlefront to go and greet his brothers, he left the supplies in, in, in the hand of the supply keeper and ran to the army and came and greeted his brother. Verse 23. Then he talked with them. There was a, and there was the champion, the Philistine of, the, of Philistine of God, Goliath by name, coming off from the armies of Philistine. And he spoke according to the same word. So David had them. Hallelujah. And all these men, when they saw the man, fled from him. When they were they lay afraid. Look at next time. So the, man of, so the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man? You know, that's the next thing. They want to draw your attention to the same fear. Yeah. You get to a new place to work. They say, our boss is very bad. Yeah. What do you know about him? You have not related with him before. What did you do that makes you to be afraid? Bible said the sinner is afraid when nobody is pursuing. Yeah. Why are you afraid? I'm not like you. Don't tell me about him. Don't tell me about her. I've not experienced her. Let me experience my boss by myself. Yeah. They will say, have you seen? Have you seen what? Yeah. Who? So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come to defy Israel. It shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with riches. He will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes. In any way you are exempted from taxes, it's a, it's a great promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. And David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man that kills the Philistines? He didn't say, what shall be done to the man that fight? Because they watch, the, 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 listen to this Philistine. He said, choose a man that come and fight me. The man said, I'm not coming to fight you. I am coming to kill you. Hallelujah. What shall be done to a man that kills him, not the man that fights him? Because when you fight, it's 50-50. You can either win or lose. I am not coming to fight. I am coming to kill you. What shall be done to a man that kills him? Don't think like these people. Don't go along with them. If you refuse to embrace, if you refuse to, if you ignore what they embrace, you will have a different result. They embrace Felicity. They embrace the fight. Say, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not embrace fight. I've come to kill. Be different. Did he kill him? Did he get, get did, did, was he promoted? Hallelujah. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You know what? This morning, I was coming and the Lord spoke to me in my heart. And I want to declare the same thing over your life. Many of you that are planning to have your cars will take delivery this morning. It will not be by purchase alone. It will be by the favor of the living God. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the Lord knows what you need. The Lord knows what you need. And the Lord shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. May the Lord go out of his way to supply everything that you need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whether it's kufis, whether it's a house, whatever you need, the Lord will supply it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Be different. The head, the uh, Philistine, Philistine, I don't care. Economy could be your Philistine. The value of now could be your Philistine. I don't know. School fees could be your Philistine. Economy could be your own Philistine. We are not coming to fight. We are coming to kill. We are coming to conquer this one. Hallelujah. The man is different. Glory be to God forevermore. Do you know how, how, how Peter lost his ministry? You know Peter was active till chapter 10. When he went to the house of Colonials. The next time we saw him in prison. And after prison, except from prison, nobody heard about him again to the end. Until you go and read the book of Galatians, you will see what happened to him in chapter 2. The Bible says, remember, they came to Antioch, remember? And the revival broke out in Antioch. And they sent Barnabas there, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And many people were added to the Lord. And they went and found Saul, right? Paul. And they taught the, 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 the disciples. The Bible said they were called Christians for the first time. They taught them for the whole year. They were told, are, are you hearing me? Then later, Agabus came and prophesied to them. After they were taught for one whole year. You don't expose your people to prophets until you have taught them first. Because when you expose them to prophets, they will confuse them. You know there's somebody that they will think that's, that's Christianity. No. Yeah. What will mature them is teaching. Yeah. Taught them for one year before they expose them to ministry of a prophet. Because prophets don't explain. They just talk. Listen to where I'm going. In the same, when the, when the, when the, when the, when the elders of the church heard what happened, they all became, began to come to Antioch. And you know what? Antioch is the present Turkey. It's the border between Syria and, and Turkey. Not, up, up, northern Turkey. And you know, that would be southern Turkey. You know what happened? When they got there, when Peter got there, they were started eating with the Gentiles. God has visited these people. They started eating with Gentiles. Then all of a sudden, some people came from James. James was the head of the church. The Jew. When they came, the Bible said they all withdrew themselves. They didn't want to be identified. They started thinking like generally like, like other people. Paul said, I stood up and I confronted them. He said, You, why are you pretending? Why are you walking in hypocrisy? He said, I confronted Peter. Because God has been dealing with the mentality of Peter by giving him that, you remember that vision? Say, rise and he said, I, I don't, I've never touched anything unclean. God told him four times, whatever I have cleaned, don't call, call more, don't call unclean. He continued with that mentality until he lost relevance. Is somebody hearing me right now? When you begin to think like other people, you will get their result. So you are now, you are now, you can now see why God chose Paul to war with him all the way to the end. Because the gospel must get to the Gentiles. Mm. He was trying to get this man to do it, but his mentality refused to change. Mm. He was thinking like other people. Other people. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, whatever God has committed to your hand is unique. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever God has given to you is different. Yes, sir. So approach it with a different mentality. Yes, Are you hearing me? Yes, I can learn from you, but I don't have to copy you. Yes. Because if I have to copy you, that means I'm no, I'm no longer necessary. Because if I'm you, it's going to be me. We have learned from so many preachers, but I don't want to be like any of them. So, as long as everybody's in the boat, and you sit with them in the boat, all of you will remain in the boat. So, this is a clarion call as I round up this morning. To challenge somebody here. I was in Joss with my sister eating her food, being sad breakfast, sharing bed with her son. So we wake up, Uncle T, you are Uncle T, your leg is touching me, I'm sorry. 
I just woke up one day. I went to a church. They were having a program. And in that church, God spoke to me. He said, this is not your resting place. So if you stay here, it will destroy you with total destruction. I rise and go to Abuja. I woke up the following day. I said, I'm going to Abuja. I said, I said, who do you know there? I said, I don't know anybody. I said, God told me to go to Abuja. I said, you go to go and do what? You, that is that is your bad. That is you have started again. He said, okay, if, I know you are very stubborn, but take this 1,000. In case you get there, you don't see anybody and it's getting dark, you come back. <laughs> I've never gone back since. <laughs> it's, been it's been 25 years. <laughs> December 19, 1999. <laughs> Everybody we left there still remain there. We think it was for nothing that God called Abraham, leave your father's house. Because if you stay back there, you will get the same result that he got. So, can't the promise of God come to pass where he was? It cannot come to pass where he was. He must step out. Why do you think God forced Joseph out? Because as long as he keeps wearing his father a robe of many colors, God has a better robe. You will say you have arrived when you have not arrived. I call it the safety of the boat. If you want to walk on the water, you need to step out. Brothers and sisters, I render my case this morning. I rest my case and I trust God for every word of you. Let us, for me, let us dare some crazy things this year. We can dare some crazy things. Just do, we just do to the glory of God. To the glory of God. We are not looking to, to please ourselves. We just try. We just say, God, we are in your hand. And in case we are about to sing, we will cry out for help. We cry for him. Lord, save us. Is somebody hearing me this morning? May the Lord stretch you. Do you hear what I said? I didn't say, I didn't say may the Lord stretch you. I said may the Lord what? Stretch you. There's so much potential. So much potential. But we will never experience them as long as we are seeking for safety and security. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Others are doing it. Are you trying to tell me that God loves them more than you? He doesn't love them more than you. Yes, you can, to the, as long as the parameter of God's love is concerned, it has no end. Amen. You can operate anywhere within that circle of his love. He will cover you. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. I commend every one of you to God. And to the word of his grace. Amen. Which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Why are you blessed coming this morning? Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, my brothers and my sisters, for the pulling on their spirit. I thank you for we are emboldened by your spirit. We thank you. Because we will be ahead in faith, Amen. ahead in life, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give you praise and we honor your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's celebrate God, everybody. So we'll take our seats. <laughs>